breakdown. And welcome inside Delaware Live Sports. Nick Allison Jr. alongside Mike Lang and Jason Winchell. Nick Halliday behind the glass here today. And no, we did not change our mind. We are ready to go. It's our 2022 bracket breakdown for both boys and girls basketball. Again, this is not a bracket reveal, a bracket breakdown. The seedings and everything were posted hours ago. We're just here to break it down for everybody and kind of dive in to some of these upcoming matchups. First off, guys, how are we doing? Oh, I think behind glass is probably the best place to be if you're in that girls committee. <laughs> Yeah, a very eventful morning, and we will dive in to all of that here in just a bit. But the seedings are out. It's that time of the year, guys, and now it's time to shift our focus. Regular season complete as we look ahead to the tournament. And we'll start with the boys here first. And right off the bat, I'll tell you, we talked about the parity this year in terms of high school basketball on the boys' side of things, both boys and girls, but specifically in the boys. And we're going to have some phenomenal matchups throughout this entire tournament. Some phenomenal round two and quarterfinal matchups, especially maybe like we haven't seen in the last few years. So let's get started, guys. And our top seed for the boys was revealed, and it will be Salazi Anum. So Salazi Anum, the Sallies, they get the top seed, and both of you guys kind of had that urge in the last week or so that that was going to be the case. Yeah, you know, their out-of-state schedule and in-state schedule was tough. They racked up uh, more bonus points, and a lot of teams have win points and total points. So, uh, you know, you rack those up, bonus points up, you get the top seed. But they had to hold off a, a some charging teams, uh, especially that last week of the season. <coughs> if you look at who they played, um, Nick, it's a bit who's who. Um, a lot of the Philadelphia teams, they played uh, – New York Reddies in the Catholic League final yeah, on Monday, Monday night. Yeah, they, and they beat Roman Catholic to get to the final. Yep. They played Roman last night, or two nights ago, rather. Uh, you know, they played MFF Charters, one of the top uh, public schools up in Philadelphia. And uh, they, they played uh, Paulsboro, beat Paulsboro, a nice win for them. The other day, Paulsboro was 20, and they came into the game at 20 and 2. Uh, so they, they took on those challenges. They, it was a nice win for them at Paulsboro. They, they struggled against. Or struggle. They they took their lumps against those Philadelphia teams and yeah. Bol and Bolas and the other Maryland team they played. But congratulations to the Sal. They uh, they they played. This is probably the toughest schedule of any Delaware team that I can remember in the last ten years. And again, Sally's a phenomenal year for them. They got some young guys that have really stepped up. Uh, Kareem Thomas and you look obviously Justin Mullen, Isaiah Hinson, another young guy. They've really played well uh, this this season, and they'll be your top seed and. Definitely one of the premier teams here this season in the state of Delaware. So they are number one. We'll jump to number two. And how about this team, guys? We had them on the show about a month ago. They were kind of hanging outside that top ten at that point. And now they have propelled themselves to the number two seed, the Caravelle Bucks. They've really been hot here in the last month or so. <coughs> had a chance to see them uh, several times, including twice in the last week. Uh, Pat, Gary, and he's not here. Pat and I went and saw them against Middletown, and then we saw them against uh, – St. Elizabeth. St. Elizabeth, thank you. And the other, it's so many games you forget. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Saw them against the Lazy Adam. They beat Sally's. They beat Middletown. Beat Sadie's. Uh, that's a really good team led by uh, John Clemens. Scored 29 points yeah. against Sadie's. He's really, really. It was 16 of 17 from the free throw line. No, he was line perfect like from the line. Oh, he was 16 of 16 Sorry about from that, the John. line. Um, it was unbelievable. It was him and uh, Don Wyatt really yeah. led the way. But they have a lot of nice complimentary pieces on that team, and, and I think they're going to be a real, real tough out. And I see who they got lined up we'll talk about that later yeah. and, and the, if I was giving out coach of the year I'd give it to Mr. Tobin uh, you know they're hot right now he, he had a young team coming in mm -hmm. he uh, weathered the storm early in the season he got these kids to believe in his system and uh, it's working uh, they're the hottest team coming into the tournament and uh, congratulations to them earning that second seed I know a few weeks ago, uh, yeah. before they got on that win streak, I had them somewhere down at seven or eight, and they climbed all the way up to a two. So tells you how important those last few weeks of the season are. And again, top eight seeds will receive a first round bye. So Caravel, they get the two seed, and we talked to Coach Tobin about a month ago. He said they had trouble finishing ball games, had trouble coming out of the locker room in the third or fourth quarter, and now they've kind of found the solution to that. And, uh, yes. And Nick, uh, let's look at the 24 versus nine matchup. You know what, Jay? That's a great shift. idea. Let's start. We'll shift. We'll go to 24 and 9. We'll get you some of these first-round matchups 
first, then we'll go back to revealing our top 10 seeds. So the first matchup here is your 9 and 24. So coming in at the 24 seed, guys, is Del Castle. So there was a little bit of a tiebreaker there with Del Castle. Be Mount Pleasant was also tied with them for consideration. Talk a little bit about how that unfolded. Well, Del Castle beat Mount Pleasant. That's really the uh, what it came down to. The actual yeah. 24 seed was Polytech. Uh, one of their opponents who we saw uh, we game we got Christo Ray. They beat Chris Ray by 42 points. Uh, did not play 15 games. Those two points didn't count. And unfortunately for the Panthers and their cool uniforms, it kept them out of the uh, right. Atlantic State Tournament. And that's something the committee talked about today to maybe address so this doesn't happen going forward. But it's going to be Del Castle. Uh, I don't think I got a chance to see the Cougars this year. Um, but they're usually really athletic. Uh, they took some losses after last year's uh, season ended. Um, but they're always tough. So again, Dover, they get the nine seed. They'll again have Del Castle in their first round. Jay Dover, they've been really impressive here this season. They've got three losses, two of them out of state, and the only other one was a two-point loss to Smyrna. And again, the last one was a loss to Woodrow Wilson. I believe a game they added late on. They finished the season 16-3. and three. They get the nine seed. A lot of people think, you know, they're one of the better teams in the state. Yeah, uh, I think unfortunately the uh, Henlope North was a little down this year other than Sparta and CR, so the, the bonus points uh, were not there. And uh, so uh, it's on, uh, you know, that unfortunately I think it hurt them a little bit. But, you know, there's, like you said, 16 and 3. They are one of the toughest nine seed. And if you're sitting there as an eight seed or a one seed, and you see Dover on that side of the bracket, wow. I mean, that it just changes things. So the winner of that game, Nick, gets number eight. Middletown's going to be at Middletown. Uh, we were there to the game, a couple games this year. Um, Dover Middletown, I think that's all, that's potential to be a really special game. And that kind of what leads us in. We talked about at the top of the show. There are going to be some fantastic second round matchups, some fantastic quarterfinal matchups. Well, there is your first possible one right there. Middletown, they get the eight seed. They will have the first round bye, and they will get the winner of Dover and Del Castle. So you've got to be thinking maybe potentially you could have a Dover-Middletown second-round matchup, and that would be some fun in round number two. Nick's ruling over there. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 any way you look at it, Middletown's going to rematch in the second round because they played Del Castle yeah. in, the, in their conference, and they also played Dover to, to kick off the year this year. I believe our good buddy Glenn Frazier had the, yeah. the pleasure of calling that one earlier in the season. And I'll tell you what, if it's Dover, Middletown, I, I think I might have to make that trip Thursday night because uh, that's going to be a great game. Yeah. Well, Glenn's on the beach right now, so he's not my buddy. <laughs> yeah, he just sent me pictures. Yeah, we got, we got the pictures. So there, there's your 24-9 and nine <laughs> matchup. Now let's jump to, to the bottom half of the bracket to the 23 seed and the 10 seed. So coming in at the 23 seed will be Tattnall. The Hornets, they get 23, and they'll be facing a top 10 team. This team coming in at number 10, and that's the Seaford Blue Jays. One of the most interesting teams we've had a chance. Coming at the beginning of the season, they were our preseason number one. Obviously had their struggles in the middle of the year. And then they close out on a 10-game win streak. And they're looking good. They also got to play this Saturday as well. Yeah, they get Dover mm -hmm. uh, for the Henlopen Conference Championship on Saturday. And then, like you said, Nick, they're one of the hottest teams along with Caravel uh, coming down the stretch. That Henlopen South uh, had some great matchups this year. And, uh, you know, Seifert went undefeated in the conference. So that, that's, uh, you know, big for them. And like you said, they struggled a little bit in the, in the midseason, uh, uh, but they've rebounded nicely, and, and they're going in, in hot. And, uh, you know, that's good. I think that's a good side of the bracket for them to be on. Yeah, a few losses for Seifert, a tough one to Cesar Rodney, 64-60, a tough one to Smyrna, 46 42. Those were the last two losses, and then Middletown. So those are the three in-state losses besides the fourth, which came at the at against our Savior Luther, and that was slam dunk to the beach, and that was a heck of a program they played there. But Seifert closing out on a 10-game win streak. They get the 10 seed. Tattnall, they get the 23 seed. You look at Tattnall, 10-9 and all the year. We had a chance to check them out against Caravel. Um, they kept in it with the Bucks for a majority of the game. They got some players that can play over there as well. But look, you look at the uh, Isaiah Sales and Caleb Sales primarily as yeah. the their main weapons, uh, you know, new coach this year at Tattnall. They've done a good job. Um, let's see a little more consistency uh, from the Hornets. But congratulations to them. They snuck in at number 23, and I think they're going to give Seifert everything they can handle. It is a long ride. Yeah, but, uh, that's another thing taken into consideration as well. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, good luck to the Hornets. So Tatnell and Seifer, that's your 23-10 matchup. And the winner of that will get the seven seed, and the first round bye goes to the Aquinemic Jaguars. So Apo, we got to see them in the last regular season game of the year when they were battling for that Flight A title against Middletown. Didn't go their way against William Penn. The Colonials get the win at home, but Apo was still able to get a top 10 seed, a seven seed, and a first round bye. Yeah, there's your second Flight A team already with their first round bye. We saw Middletown and now Apo in there at seven. Great year for Apo. Yeah. I mean, there was a, a team that graduated a lot last year, and we, we didn't know what to expect at the, at the beginning of the year. In fact, I don't think they were like nine or ten in our preseason top ten. And, yeah. you know, they, they played really well against a very tough schedule, and, uh, you know, they have some losses twice to William Penn in, in a game to uh, – but they meet Middletown. So, yeah. you know, they, they they were in there for that Flight A title until the last game of the regular season. And yeah, I mean, if, when you think about Apo, you think about defense. They like to get out and run. They play really good defense. Eric Mathang, Hodge Bell, and company Tommy Vaughn Jr., they're going to lead the Jaguars into round number two. We talked about these potential second-round matchups. Well, how about that one? Apo and Seaford, another fantastic second-round potential matchup, but Tattnall's going to look – to spoil that as well as the 23 seats. They're going to have a party down there in the Middletown area on that yeah. Thursday night. <laughs> you know what would make, it even, know. It would make it even games? better? You know what would make it better? Is if one game was at 5.30 <laughs> at one school and one game was at 7.30 at the other school. That's not happening. And then you could get to both games. Imagine that, Nick. I thought Why, that's that, what we were that, doing. Who knew that? Now, why would, they <laughs> why do would you do like something that? like why that? Why would you want to stagger? Anyway, I'm not here to ruffle feathers, so let's move on. <laughs> and moving on now to our 22 <laughs> and 11 matchup. You look down the 22 seed, a team that had their ups and lows this year. That's going to be the St. Mark's Spartans, led by Jabri White, and they'll be taking on a team that they know pretty well. That's the 11 seed St. Elizabeth. So you got a little Catholic matchup here at 11 and 22 in the first round, St. Mark's versus St. E's. Obviously, they've met each other a few times already this season. Yeah, this is one that we've seen before. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think the St. Mark's, uh, you know, they lost a few players in midseason, and you can see you can see it in the record. They yeah. lost uh, four, three or four in a row. Uh, they got those guys back. They started winning again. It's They had a little bit of inconsistency, but I like what Lonnie Wright's done there this year. Uh, they're a fun team to watch, and they're, and they're good guys. Uh, they were playing St. E's. St. E's really, really tough. Added Sean Chandler over the last few games yeah. of the season. He is a difference maker for that team. Yeah. They have a, a, a true point guard for that team. He also scores. Um, it frees up some other guys not to have to bring the ball up the court mm -hmm. to have Handler, uh, Chandler handling the ball. Um, they're, I think St. E's is going to be a really tough out at the St. E's Center on Tuesday night, but it, it should be. And like I said, these teams, these guys know each other, and it should be a fun one. Yeah, St. Elizabeth's J, 15 and 5 on the season. But they beat St. Mark's both times, as you talked about this year coming in. It's hard to beat a team three times, yeah, uh, but that's going to be a great first round matchup. And and St. Mark's won four out of their last five, and that f only loss they had was to Sally's. And, so and, and, they, ha and they had the lead in that that's game right. and struggled at the foul line. They've also struggled at the foul line the, the, the last few games of the regular season. One of them, they were two for 10. I think they need to approve that if they want to beat St. Elizabeth. It's going to, you know, they, they got to be better at the foul line. I think Coach Wright will have them shooting free throws oh, yeah. and getting oh, ready. For they're shooting them right now. Yeah. I know. <laughs> he's in the gym and he's, he's getting them ready. But, yeah, that's one thing I would like to see St. Mark's approve if they want to get out of there with the win. I have a feeling I'll be at the St. E Center on, uh, on, yeah. on Tuesday night. Yeah, and free throw is a big part of winning games come playoff time. So, as you mentioned, it's going to be big for the Spartans to see if they can do that. But it should be a good one at 22 and 11. But the winner of that one, who are they going to get in round number two? That's going to be the sixth seed, a team that we just talked about very briefly. That's the William Penn Colonials. So they get the sixth seed. They get a first-round buy-in. What a season. The Colonials have had head coach Gary Lumpkin. They're having a great year, led by Gabe Valmon and Jalen Sample. Yeah. And, and there's the third Flight A team. So we got Flight A, six, seven, and eight. Three of them in there with the first round by. It tells you how strong that Blue Hen Flight A conference was this year. And uh, like you said, William Penn, we got to see him beat Apple Quinnemick twice. Uh, you know, they, they played a tough schedule, a nice win over a good St. E's team. Uh, they lost in overtime to Caravelle. They lost to Sally's. Uh, I believe they lost to uh, Howard. So some good losses in there, but uh, some great wins. And 
and uh, they're going to be a tough team there sitting in that six seed. Yeah, again, one of the better backcourts in the state of Delaware. They're going to be yeah. tough to beat, and again, it's going to be a great tournament for all these yeah, teams. We saw, saw them the other day, Nick. Yeah. Belmont shot from the logo. Yeah, twice, <laughs> twice, twice. I think he went two Gave for three Belmont from the logo. Shot from the logo and all, yeah, all could do the same. Yeah. Yeah. Jalen yeah. Sample, another yeah. guy who yeah. yeah. from a mile away. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, fun to watch. So only one of those two teams had played Re William Penn in the past. St. Elizabeth, St. Mark's did not. And back in that game was February 3rd, and it was a a 66-58 win for William Penn over St. East. However, St. East trailed by 10 at halftime, came back and took the lead. Yeah. And then William Penn, oh, I was at the game. Uh, they came back and took the lead, and then uh, Penn made a lot of foul shots down the stretch and uh, just pulled away a little bit. It was a lot closer than the previous yeah. games. And again, that could be we again. We were somewhere that night, but I stopped yeah, at that. It was the game. First round going to be fantastic with St. East and St. Mark's, and then even better again in the second round, one of those teams meeting William Penn yeah, yeah. as the six seed as a first round by for the Colonials. So now we're on to our 21 and 12 matchup, 21 seed, a team that Glenn had a chance to check out a few times this year. That's the Caesar Rodney Riders. They get the 21 seed and they're gonna be traveling up north to take on the 12 seed, the Archmere Ox. Got a little bit of a late start for Archmere with the football players kind of getting back into it after taking home the state title in football in the fall and then a little bit of a I guess it was a COVID issue or just a sickness issue midway through, like a lot of programs went through in late December, having to cancel games and having to get some games back. But Archmere gets the 12 seed CR, they get the 21. Yeah, and uh, I think this is con contrasting styles, Nick. Yeah, uh, yeah. A Caesar Rodney team that likes to score and play a fast pace. Archmere a little bit more deliberate, uh, more fundam fundamental. They like to slow it down. Uh, so this, this game could be dictated by the score and what pace uh, wins out, but uh, I think it's going to be an excellent first round matchup and probably one of the better ones out there in, yeah. in the first round. And uh, it's a nice trip up to Claymont for this, uh, <laughs> the Riders. Oh, yeah. And Mike, you know Archmere very well. I know Archmere very well. I have not, believe it or not, Caesar Rodney, one of the few teams I did yeah, not see this year. Funny, yeah. um, and, uh, but Archmere, like Jay said, they're, they're pretty fundamental. Uh, they're healthy, which is, is good. Um, you know, Remember Chris Albero from football? Yeah, absolutely. He runs the show in basketball mm -hmm. as well. A lot of their football players on that team, but they're all in basketball shape now, and it should be a uh, should be a good one. I expect the uh, student section to be there pretty uh, in force. Um, you know, you know, been there at every game pretty much is Kieran Yudovich, the man since the other game. Yeah. Every game, Kieran Yudovich. Yeah. Yeah. And Archmere twelve and six on the year. Season Rodney also having a pretty good year themselves, twelve and eight. They've won their last four with wins over Milford, Newark, Tartar, Sussex Tech, and McCain. So CR, riding a little bit of a hot streak in as well, and should be a good one there in round number one. You look ahead now to the winner of that one. Who are they going to get in a team we've seen a few times this year? New head coach for the Sanford Warriors this season, Tyrone Perry. They get the five seed and a first round bye, and they will get the winner of CR and Archmere. But Sanford, we got to check them out a few times. We've seen them beat Howard when Howard was the top team in the state. They've got a lot of talent on that team, and – they played well so far this year. Well, I like um, Sanford. They just played Archmere the other night, a late addition, and they, they took care of, of Archmere. It's not really that close. Uh, they're playing pretty strong. You know, they have taken – they've had a few surprises this year. You know, uh, St. Andrews got them, Tower Hill got them. Yeah. And, uh, of course, uh, Salesian uh, beat them at the Chase Center at the yeah, uh, SL24. Yeah. Um, it's not quite the same Sanford team that we're used to seeing, but they do have a new coach. They saw Dan Polk with Chris Stanford inside. They have Porter Kelly shooting threes. Yep. They do have some talent on that team. Not quite as dominant as before, and I, I think that's good. Kind of it evens out the field a little bit. Yeah, and but a little they're, bit they're still a really good team. Yeah, and you mentioned they got a lot of talent, as you just said, and all those guys could contribute for the Warriors. Yeah, and what I like is Coach Perry's done a good job. I think he knows that the team's not going to score as much as they used to in the past. Yeah. So he tries to keep it a little bit more, you know, tough defense, and they, and they play great Howard. defense. And you saw that against Howard. They, they, they did not get into Howard's pace of, of playing fast. They played their pace, and they were able to dictate it. And I think that's key for Sanford come this state tournament. So there you have it. CR 21, March near 12. The winner of that one earns a date with Sanford in round number two. On to our 20 and 13 matchup for the boys here, round number one. And this will be a good one for a little bit some downstate action here. Two teams that Glenn knows pretty well. 
coming in at the 20 seed. That's going to be the St. George's Hawks, who have put together a pretty good year for St. George's this year on the hardwood. And they're going to meet the Smyrna Eagles, who grabbed that 13 seed. So 20 St. George's, Smyrna 13 in round one. And just like Archburn and Sanford, they just played this week. Uh, yeah, that's right. St. George's went down to, to uh, Smyrna, and Smyrna took home the victory. Smyrna's starting to get hot at the right time. You th throw out that Cape Ten open loss. I believe they won five out of the last six coming down the stretch. Yeah. Uh, gets them, uh, got, got them in there in a, a, a higher seat. I had them on the road for a while until the, the last few weeks. So, uh, you know, a good stretch run there. And like I said, they just played Monday night. Uh, but like you said, sometimes it's hard to beat a team a second or even a third time. And again, Smyrna, 12-7 and seven on the year. We had a chance to check them out against Salazian. That was a game Sally's led from wire to wire. But again, Smyrna just didn't really look themselves in that matchup on the road. It was an early start up in Wilmington. Yeah, that's we'll that's also in yeah right, that's exactly why. But St. George's, they are 11-9, and nine, as you mentioned. They had lost to Woodbridge and Smyrna, but then were able to get a win over Concord to close out the regular season. But again, St. George's 11-9, and nine, and having a pretty good year. So that should be a good matchup in round one with Smyrna and St. George's. But who is the winner of that going to meet? The four seed and a team that's been hovering near the top all season long, a team we've seen uh, a few times, and are there, they have been impressive. That is the Howard Wildcats. They grabbed the four seed and a first round bye. Just had a chance to see Howard at Sally's last week. By the way, maybe my favorite game of the year as far as atmosphere goes. Yeah. It was packed. It was loud. It was uh, intense. And uh, it was. I wish I was it was a lot of fun, uh, and I was really, really impressed with Howard. They have, they've got length. They've got uh, guys who can shoot. I mean, you're, you're not going to out-rebound them most of the time. Uh, they play that smothering pressure defense, um, and, and they, they, they get out and run. One, you, you, you can't run with them. You've you got to slow them up. See what uh, Sanford did yeah. for them really shut down their offense and made them play a half-court game. And that game was still very close. Howard had a chance to win that game, game yeah. yeah. But they held well, Howard to 29 points. But exactly. I, I, I love Howard. I think it's a great team. Yeah. That was a game where Howard got into some early foul trouble, and I think that's key uh, sure is, is, the, is their sure depth. Is. Yep. Uh, but like Mike said, you know, and, and that game changed against Lazy Animal when they went to a press in the third quarter and forced, uh, in the early fourth quarter and forced numerous turnovers from that Sally's offense, which doesn't turn the ball over normally. Yeah. That tells you how good that Howard pressure defense is. And when they got that press game working, uh, watch out. They're dangerous. Uh, they got the fourth seed, three-way tiebreaker. Yep. And, and, you know, and they, they end up getting the uh, – with the with the common opponents, uh, win percentage against common opponents, we were able to get that fourth seed, which was key. And I agree with you, Mike and Jay. Howard, a very impressive team, one of the most impressive teams I got to see so far in the state this year, Hollingsworth. Can light it up scoring. Darius Brown, one of the most athletic guys you'll find. He can go up, crash the boards. He can score as well. And then you got Matthews and DeShields, the two yeah. two guards. They can both shoot and light it up. They could give you 20 on any given day. So Howard's going to be a tough out for anybody in the tournament. Again, they will have the winner of Smyrna and St. George's. Looking ahead of that, um, Smyrna went to Howard last year and yes. beat Howard at home. Yep. So that could be a, 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 yeah, how about a that? Howard Smyrna. Last season. Yeah. At Howard, right? At Howard again. A and, so you and, get and guess what? The winner of that game last year went to Slazy Anna. Oh. <laughs> so how about that? It's uh, and, and eerily, eerily similar. I, I think it's going to be, could be the sa almost the same kind of. Well, let's keep it moving here. We just talked about St. George's and Smyrna. Now on to our 19 and 14 matchup. So, guys, the 19 seed was... Delmar, they were able to end their season on a high note the other day. They get the 19 seed, and they will meet the 14 seed Woodbridge. The Raiders coming in at 13 and six. They've dropped their last two tough losses to Laurel and Seaford, but the Blue Raiders have had a pretty good year. They were hovering just outside that top 10 for a majority of it, and they're going to come here and they're going to grab the 14 seed. I can be honest, I haven't seen either one of these teams. I did see a little Delmar when we streamed them at Lake yeah. Forest. Uh, I believe they. They have an up and down type of season, but hey, when when you get in, that's that's really what matters. Anything could happen when you get to this point. But they're going to have to play at Woodbridge. Uh, you know, they're familiar with Woodbridge, obviously in the Henry South. So um, I expect a pretty even game. But I know Jay had a chance to see Delmar in person. They're probably going to go very hungry. Delmar got off to a hot start, struggled coming down the stretch a little bit. Uh, they are very young, uh, very guard oriented. Uh, we saw them against Lake Forest. They struggled on the boards. 
um, but were able to win that game. Um, they got great guard play, um, you know, and they and they get a, a matchup they're familiar with with a Woodbridge team, um, you know, at, at third time. You know, like you said, Nick, some, uh, I believe they beat Woodbridge earlier this year, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I, yeah, I think they split, but I'm, I'm not 100% sure. But uh, like you said, the third time, uh, it could be a rubber match or it could be a Delmar's, uh, you know, split. looking for it. Yeah. Yes, you're right, Jerry, yeah. as you usually are. And, <laughs> again, Woodbridge 13-6. and six. They do have wins, again, over St. George's. They beat Delmar once. And uh, they also beat Lake Forest and a couple other teams. Polytech, who was unable to get in um, late as they did the seedings. But she'll be a good first-round matchup. Like you said, the teams know each other. But who will they get in round number two? They will get the three seed. And that is a team we just had the luxury of checking out this past Tuesday. And they looked really good on the road at DMA. That's Tower Hill. Yeah, the, the Tower Hill hers, um I'm sure are going to ask me this question later. But they would probably be one of my fav favorites to make it to the – to the Final Four this year. That they're just a really talented group, uh, you know, and I'm glad they got the three seed. Uh, but the, man, they're going to be a tough out for anybody. They're another team that's very disciplined. They don't make any, many mistakes, and their talents there. I mean, we saw, you know, the, the biggest kid on the floor nail three pointers from half court <laughs> and made it look easy. <laughs> so I call him Mini Yoke. Yes. Where did it come from? Uh, but Davis, Davis Bland. Bland, yeah, he's yeah. been he was impressed. I mean, Tower Hill, he got the Shepherds, Shepherds Davis yeah, Bland. Um, I mean, yeah, they've got a bunch of guys that could score. We saw that on Tuesday. They were very impressive. They're experienced, and they're good. And uh, now something for Tower Hill uh, in that second round is they get to play at home. And you know that that, that Carpenter Fieldhouse is – it's if you haven't played there before, it's like oh, I'm yeah. sure Woodbridge and Delmar have not. It's, it's a little different. You go there, it's dark. Uh, they have the uh, the curtains are going to be up, so there's going to be a, a, a depth, depth problem yeah, uh, sure. on either end. It gets loud in there. Um, there's not a lot of bleachers. There's people standing everywhere. We'll so be there to watch. Most likely not streaming from Tower Hill. No, it's, it's tough it, for us. It's, <laughs> it's tough for it's us. It's almost <laughs> impossible to stream yeah. from unless you get a platform, but uh, and some lights. But it's uh, it's a neat building, and, and it's just a big home field home court advantage for the Hillers. I had a bad. Slide there, so I had Woodbridge Delmar flip flop. So I apologize. Oh. I fixed it. Yeah. You are forgiven. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's Delmar's nineteen Woodbridge and Woodbridge fourteen. 14. Yeah. Again, the winner I'll, will I'll, get. I'll fix that. They'll get Tower Hill again. Tower Hill had a really good year. We'll see how um, they turn out here as we progress into the tournament. On to our next matchup. Here it's going to be the eighteen seed. St. Andrews. Andrews, right? Yeah. We'll talk about them. They're going to get the 15 seed Delmarva Christian, and we'll talk a little bit about Delmarva Christian and how the seat, you know, about the seedings and everything there. But let's just start with that. St. Andrews and Delmarva Christian. That should be a good one in the first round. That, that's probably one of the better first round matchups. There. I mean, there's a lot, but man, I, I'm looking forward to that one. St. Andrews coming off a win over Sanford. Yeah, the other how about day. that to close out the season? And they played Sanford back to back uh, because yeah. Bill told us he was. Uh, Mr. Harmon was at the uh, the first game on Saturday, and he said St. Andrews took uh, Sanford down to the wire on their senior night, and uh, then uh, you know they beat them the next night, and uh, they're a very good team. Uh, I got a chance to see them earlier in the year against the Slade Ham team that was clicking on all cylinders when they played, but uh, a tough schedule to go 13 and seven in that tough independent conference. They yeah. also played Apo, Middletown, Sally's, so their schedule's real strong. They played these. These competitive games, uh, but it's not an easy trip down to Delmarva Christian. Uh, I think that's going to be a fantastic matchup on, on Tuesday night to get it started. And Jones, one of the better scorers we're going to see here for the Royals. And St. Andrews, a lot of hype. A lot of hype on that team. Uh, and like you mentioned, Delmarva Christian's got Don Ferries Jones. Mm -hmm. You might remember him from uh, Laurel two years ago when he was a freshman. And the uh, Panthers. And they have Gabe Hurling, Gabe Hurling who can yeah. just shoot the lights out. Those two are the main scorers. They're not alone, but uh, keep your eye on Dontarius Jones and Gabe Hurling. They are the uh, straws that stir that drink mm -hmm. for the Royals, and uh, they usually have a pretty good home court advantage as well. So it should be – Jason mentioned it should be a fun one. St. Andrews, you know, I saw them light up the scoreboard this year, and then I saw them not do so well. So they're kind of a Jekyll and Hyde team, but they, they do have a lot of height, and they have some talent on that team. And, again, it seems like, you know, 
just a few years ago, pre-pandemic or as the pandemic kind of started, we were almost on our way to see St. Andrews at the Bob Carpenter Center. What a run oh they were God, putting yeah, together yeah, yeah, yeah. before the pandemic put a hey, stop coach, to all coach, that. Terrell Myers does a great job yeah. from St. Andrews. You got these are kids who come in from all over the country. Uh, a lot of times new blood every year, new blood at every school, but new blood every year. These kids don't grow up knowing each other and playing in St. Andrews new clubs. He does a great job making a team out of the guys who are, and they, they live there, so they're together all the time. So it's a little unique situation in St. Andrews, but he, he really, Terrell does a great job. And again, it's going to be a fantastic first round match of 18 St. Andrews versus 15 Delmar of a Christian. And now to the team we already talked, we already gave away the two seed. That was the Caravel Bucks. So another fantastic second round matchup potentially with Caravel and either of these two teams come round number two. They're just so talented, Caravel. You mentioned Clemens and Wyatt, and then you have Miles uh, White. And, yeah. Uh, you know, they put Owen Robinson in the other night against St. Andrews, and the guy just, just starts scoring points. He just goes underneath and, and creates space and gets himself buckets. Uh, there are a lot of weapons. Amari Gordon on that team and Makai Parman just so much. And Jason mentioned the job that Mark Tokey does. Uh, yeah. I really appreciate uh, uh, what, what Mark has done there. And uh, it's been a pretty, pretty fun basketball season overall at Caraville. I believe their uh, season turned around when they came on to our, that's our, absolutely our right. show. You can't argue with that, right? That's <laughs> right. <laughs> you can't argue with that. I mean, that's but, just fact. <laughs> but, <what> <laughs> exactly <laughs> right. But uh, like you said, that's going to be a tough matchup because that St. Andrews team just beat beat Sanford. So yeah, that's you a know, good point. You know, and Sanford beat Caraval earlier this year. So, you know, and Delmar Christian, and Delmar Christian probably would have been a higher seed. If Worcester Prep got the 15 games, so yeah, so yeah, I mean, you know, so I mean, that's another good team, and and so it, it won't be easy. I believe Caravel and, and Delmarva Christian played earlier in the year, and I believe Caravel won by about 15, somewhere in that range. So it it, it would be a rematch of, of a regular season game, uh, that that uh, so you know, and I believe it was at Caravel, so Delmarva Christian Christian's used to going up there. Yeah, that one back on December 30th. So again, a little bit there, but you are right, 14 point victory for Caravelle back in that matchup. So Caravelle, they are your two seed. They'll get the winner of Delmarva Christian and St. Andrews. So as we head back to the top of the bracket for our final first round matchup, that's 17 and 16, your 17 seed, the Laurel Bulldogs, led by Javier White, fresh off his 1,000th career point, I believe about a week or so ago for the Laurel Bulldogs. And they're gonna get A.I. DuPont and uh, Marcus Handy and company there for the tie. So let me tell you, that's going to be one fun game. And I can see Nick Halliday making his way to Ed <laughs> <laughs> that game. There, there, there are not enough basketballs in that gym for those guys. This, no. These are teams that love to run, love to shoot, love to score. Javi White's having a fantastic season. He's going to get some all-state consideration, as is uh, Mark Handy. Yeah. Uh, those two uh, are just two of the players on those teams, obviously. that I, I had a chance to see Laurel at St. Mark's. It was their first game of the year. They were a little rusty coming off of that football state championship. Um, and I've seen AI a few times. And, first and football state championship in what, 81? Yeah, since 30, I think it was 30 years. Yeah. Uh, so those guys were still in football shape, but obviously they, they finished like 16 and 4. They played a lot of games recently. Yeah. They had some four game weeks there to get, <laughs> get their games in. We'll That's see how much they players. how much they have in the tank, but the guys they have are really talented. Yeah, and that, that should be a fun one. Don't foul out. <laughs> 10 out of the last 11 wins I'll, I'll, for Laura. I'll tell you what. I always said we might not see triple digits on the scoreboard. <laughs> <laughs> we could see that night. Those be like that like that. Be a both, fun teams, one. both teams like the score. Both it will be a fast-paced game. Uh, it will be a great game. Probably one of the normally 16-17 is, is the matchup you want to see, and, and another good one there. Uh, I think that, it's, that, that game could be over in 45 minutes. <laughs> 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 and again, Laurel, as you mentioned, Mike, 16 and 4 on the year. AI DuPont, 14 and 5. So a, a good for them as well. And they've closed out their season seven straight wins yeah. for the AI DuPont Tigers. So again, that should be a fun one in round one. But winner of that one's going to get a matchup with the top seed in the tournament, and that is Salazi Yanum. So again, winner of there will be heading up to Sally's to play on Thursday, March 3rd. So first round, just for reference, thir or excuse me, Tuesday, March 1st. Thursday, March 3rd, will be round number two. So there you have it. We've been through the bracket we talked about. We've broken down the matchups. And now just a little open discussion here, guys. You have a, If you had to make a long shot pick, maybe somewhere in between 17, 24, one of those lower seeds, do you, which one of those seeds you maybe make or do you maybe see going to, going to the quarterfinals? Quarterfinals? Yeah. Okay, so they'd have to get two wins. 
Oh, that's a tough one. Let's see. Maybe I'll defer to Mike. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, uh, you know what? I will go. I'm going to go St. Andrews. St. Andrews. How about that? As an 18 seed. Um, you know, Car- I don't know if they'll beat Caravelle in the second round, but it's a team that I th- that's played that co- type of competition before, and it wouldn't shock me to see it. Uh, but if I had to pick one, maybe that. But uh, – I think it's it, I think it's gonna be tough for any of these long shots to get to the to get two road wins. I mean that's that's asking a lot just to get to the quarterfinals. As, as much as I like Howard, I can see St. George's sneaking really? okay. in there. Uh, if they put in, they, if they can get by Smyrna, they know Howard. I mean they, they played. I think they played before. Um, and and they, there are ways to beat Howard. Yeah. And if you can implement. That, that plan, and, and Rod Griffin's a really good coach. Yes, he is. Not th- nothing against Rashawn Matthews. I think he does a fantastic job at Howard. But uh, I can see St. George's possibly getting by, but I agree it's going to be tough for uh, people outside the top 10 or 12. Make it a little bit easier on you guys this time. Let's do a, a little bit of a higher seed. We'll maybe go between around 9, 16. Do you see maybe of those teams having a chance to make it to the semifinals? Well, I think Dover. Yeah, I agree with you there. It's Dover. Dover coming in at the 9. and. Again, you don't want to see Dover in the first round. And we talked about the second round matchup for Middletown. That's a tough second round matchup. Yeah, it's at Middletown. But Dover, Middletown in round two, if that were to play out that way, would be fantastic. I think, yeah. I think 9, 10, 11, all, I think those three teams can get hot and really yeah. go on a little bit of run. I think Dover, Dover, more dangerous yeah. than people think. And like Mike said, you know, that 9 seed Dover, you get Middletown and Sally's. I think they, you know, they have a chance to beat those both teams and get to the semifinals. It's not going to be easy. It's yeah. two road games. But it's <laughs> two road games, and that, that's, a, you know, a thing to look at. But, you know, it's uh, anything is and possible. The reason I say, I, I'm sorry, as I said, uh, St. East, because they played William Penn, they, they played them really tight. So yeah, they got they, Chandler. They, right? they can get by St. Mark's. They have Sean Chandler. They can get – maybe since they, if they – Put together something they didn't against William Penn the first time. They still have to get through, you know, poss- probably Tower Hill. So like I said, it's not it's not easy and it's probably not likely. But the U.S. for I think the team's yeah. already yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And there, you, I mean, you have it right. Dover at nine. You've got uh, St. Elizabeth at eleven and Seaford at ten. Yeah, nine, yeah. ten, eleven all have a chance for that. Now it's to the fun part here, guys. We're gonna pick final fours and state champions here. Live on the air, <laughs> Delaware Live Sports. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah. Nick Allisonini. That's right, because Ruby calling the game. Nick Allisonini, alongside Mike Lang and Jason. Where's the Lynch. measure? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I locked you in. Sorry, you can't go. Can't uh, pick champions. All right, we won't pick <laughs> champions there. Boss tells me <laughs> I can't do it. Thanks. So we're gonna Thank go you, final boss. four. We'll go final four <laughs> choices, and Nick will get yours as well. You're not. You're not out of this one. We'll ask you in a second, but I'll give you guys a few minutes. Again, your top four seeds are Sally's, Caravel. Um, Tower Hill and Howard. Do you guys see it playing out that way? Give me your final fours. And again, you can you know go out on a limb here if you want to. It's gonna be it's it'd be tough to pick this year's final four. Um, Jay, we'll start with you. Yeah, bro. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm I'm gonna pick Caravel and Tower on that one okay. side. Yep. I think they're they're gonna so the two both, and the three. I think they're both gonna get there. Uh, both are are hot at the right time. Um, Howard Sanford is an interesting one for me if, if it's those two. Uh, so I'm going to go with Sanford. Okay. Uh, Sanford beat them earlier in the year. I think if they can play their pace that they did the first time, um, I think they can they can they might be able to sneak into the Final Four. Uh, and, and <laughs> wow. I, I, I'll, I'm going to go Sally's. I, I think they – I think they, you know, if they get Middletown again, they beat them on the road. Now they get them at home. Uh, but the key for me for Sally's is what a they, rematch that would be. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They, that one got chippy. Yes. <laughs> and exactly right. And and then I can't wait. Uh, like I said, I can't even wait for that quarterfinal. Yeah. Whether it's Sally's Middletown or Sally's Dover, it's going to be excellent. But uh, I think if you know what gets Sally's, the pressure against Howard got to the Sally's. I think if Middletown or Dover can do that, mm-hmm. then Sally's could be in trouble. But I, I do think they sneak into the Final Four because they get to play at home in front of the one one of the best student sections in in the state of Delaware. What he said, <laughs> <laughs> Mike. I'm coming to you. Actually, I do have uh, pretty close. Yeah, I yeah. like Slazy to come out of that top yep. half. 
Um, they, their schedule was just so tough this year. And I think, you know, they, they proved themselves in just about everybody in here. Uh, I like Howard coming out of the next bracket. Mm -hmm. um, I just think that they learned from their previous game against Sanford. And if, if they do play Sanford, we'll see what happens there. I like William Penn. I just like what yeah. I've seen from them. So I'm going to go with Penn. Uh, and I can see Penn and Tower Hill meeting in that quarterfinal. That would be a lot of fun for Penn to be um, at Tower. would be a good one. But I like the Colonials. And then uh, I think Caraval is just red hot. And I, I'm just going to go with Caraval. I haven't a chance to see them a half dozen times this year. They are just a lot of fun to watch. And, and I think the talent is on top of that. So there you have it, Jay. Right Caravel, Tower, Sanford, Sally's, Michael, Sally's, Howard. William Penn and Caravel. I look to Nick Halliday <laughs> for choice number three, our final four. Nick, we've heard you there behind behind the computer or on the mics here, and now let's uh, let's give everybody some insight on what you're thinking. My, mine's easy. No offense to any other teams on here, but I have to go with all my BSN schools. <laughs> 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 if not, none of the coaches are going to buy stuff from me again. So. Oh, wait, what are the BSN schools? St. Andrews? Middletown. <laughs> okay. Stanford. Oh, wow. Okay, there we go. Um, Howard. And they play each other. Wait, Tower Hill and Apple, they're all my schools. So, there yeah. <laughs> so interesting final four there. So four I got and final May. five. No, uh, you know, uh, again, not having any bias or anything. Yeah. Um, this no one's probably what. one of the toughest ones yeah, to try yeah, and, and these, call. Um, man, you, there's a lot of – can go either ways, to be honest with you. Um, I, I, I really like the way Tower is playing this yeah. year. Yeah. Um, they've been playing really good. Um, uh, Sally's has been tough. No, I didn't, they didn't buy anything. <laughs> be a great one as well. And I could see that going any other way. Yeah. I mean, Middletown's yeah. really tough. Apple is really tough. Mm -hmm. William Penn, Townsville, they're all good teams. So, to me, I just want to see good games. So yeah. I'm, I'm That's how, uh, again, most of us are. Yeah. And then lastly, as we wrap up our men's, we'll, then we'll quickly shift to the girls' bracket here in a minute as, after we take a break. Um, but first year, potential best matchup in maybe the early rounds or the whole tournament. What matchup potentially do you see on here that you're – Looking forward to the most. We've talked about a bunch of them, but one throughout the entire tournament could be maybe the quarters. You think it's going to happen in the semis, first round? You, you, whatever you're shooting. The game I want to see is Slazian and Howard. Yeah, <laughs> that's, I guess. What I, that's what I want to see. And that would be again. That would be a quarterfinal matchup. That's in the semifinal. Semifinal, oh, semifinal matchup. Excuse me. That'd be Thursday, I'm March 10th. Ahead, no, yeah, that's so we'll game see. I want? That would be a great rematch. Jay, over you. Uh, uh, I, I'm going to go a. Uh, I think I'm going to go. Uh, around earlier the quarterfinals and I really think uh, Apo Clinic yeah. and Caravel uh, will be a good matchup. Apo took the regular season uh, matchup from them and, and I think that game could be uh, very exciting and I would love to, I'd like to see that. In fact, I'd, I'd like to see all four of the quarterfinal matchups. Oh, yeah. Maybe yeah. maybe we can uh, get yeah. that back at the bottom how, sometime. How would that be possible? How would we be able to see all four quarterfinals? <laughs> oh, stagger time. you got to be able to transport. That's uh, how. Wait, it, it is a Saturday. It it is is a Saturday. Saturday. They're staggered at two games of one and two games of four <laughs> at different locations. So, yeah, I mean. Gas up the car. Yeah, gas up the car and get ready to drive and around. Pick two but of the four. For I'm gonna go, guys. I'm gonna go with a Sally's Dover quarterfinal matchup. We're Sally's Middletown, the winner of that one. I think if Dover's able yeah. to put together two wins on the road, they'll be riding riding high as they head into Wilmington, Middletown as well. The middle of the winner of Middletown Dover against Sally's in the quarters. And that's what I'm gonna go with. Nick Halliday, you got one? If this happens, I mean, I want to see Tower Hill Caravel, but, but if, if it's Seifert Caravel in the quarter, yeah, that'd be a good that, one too. That would be a good matchup just for both teams, the way they are, yeah. the way they like to run and shoot. Um, it's an intriguing matchup. Yeah, there know. are a bunch of them. So uh, there you have it for our men's bracket breakdown. Again, action set to get started on Tuesday. 
March 1st, and there are some great first round matchups. You can keep up with Delaware Live Sports for updates, any information regarding the upcoming tournament. So for Nick Allison, Judy, Mike Lang, Jason Winchell, and Nick Halliday, uh, final words here as we wrap up our boys' bracket breakdown. No, I just uh, like it's going to be a great four round, five rounds of, of basketball. Uh, just remember Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Thursday, Saturday for the boys, and uh, that's going to be a fun two weeks. Uh, of games and and I think it's wide open. I, I mean, we picked four final four yeah, teams. That could. <laughs> I, it, all, any of our four teams might not even be in the final four. That's how wide open I, I think yeah, it is this year. Like Remember to buy your tickets online. Yes. And uh, yeah, that's it. Let's get and once we get our streaming positive, schedule, be positive. Root for the kids. Yeah, absolutely. Let's uh, give the referees a break. Mm -hmm. And again, we will get you our streaming schedule once we finalize that on the NFHS Network, powered by Delaware Live Sports. We'll get that out to you next week. We're going to take a break. We come back over to the girls' bracket breakdown right here on Delaware Live Sports. Don't go anywhere. High school athletics is not what it used to be. The sporting goods industry has been disrupted. Adding to coach and athletic director daily challenges, BSN Sports stands ready to change the fundamentals of our industry giving our customers the advantages they need right now. Your dedicated local sales pro is supported with nationwide team service including sport and category experts. Get the look of D1 colleges and pro teams with our program that streamlines ordering your staff apparel, player gear, and fan wear. Stretch your budget with our fundraising solution. Free and ready in minutes. Our campus branding products are perfect for boosting school and team pride. BSN Sports has the advantages you need right now. Welcome to Premier Physical Therapy and Sports Performance. We're a locally owned outpatient physical therapy practice with convenient locations in all three counties in Delaware. At Premier, we have experienced physical therapists with advanced credentials, but their hospitality, passion, and enthusiasm is what makes the difference for you. Find our convenient locations at premierptsb.com. You may have tried physical therapy, but have you tried Premier? How you doing? My name is Mike Cassidy. I'm the founder and president of Cassidy Painting. I started back in 1984, incorporated in 1986. I never had the word no in my vocabulary. Uh, when someone called me to do a job, I always said yes, whether it was a struggle, whether it was seven days a week, uh, sun up to sundown, it, it didn't matter. And with that philosophy, we were able to grow to the size we are. We employ close to 80 uh, individuals. We really enjoy being in the family business. Um, I look forward to coming to work every day. And it's so nice to work with the people that we work with in the office. Uh, we've really become a family with them. We really create a family experience around here. And Cassidy Painting is a very diversified company. We don't say no to anything. We deal with everything. At Ferris Home Improvements, your family's comfort and safety is always our top priority. If you call us for your roofing, windows and doors, siding, decks, kitchen, and bathroom needs, you can expect health screen craftsmen who wear gloves and face masks and follow minimum six foot distancing, virtual conferences to discuss project details, job quotes delivered electronically or brought to your door for your review and approval, and our showrooms in Newark and Rehoboth Beach remain open for limited appointments. We're here together. Operating with precautions. To protect our staff. And our customers. At Fairs Your home, your community, it's not just where you live, 
It's where you belong. At Dover Federal Credit Union, we understand what it means to be local. We started here, and we're not going anywhere. We're as local as it gets, and we like it that way. We're not just a financial institution. We are the local credit union that you can trust. Local people, local decisions. Dover Federal Credit Union. Your home. Make assurance that your HVAC system is what you need with Ambience. Ambience provides you with over 25 years of experience in the heating, cooling, and plumbing industry. The team at Ambience Heating and Air Conditioning provides high quality residential HVAC installations, maintenance, and repairs in new and older homes in the Delaware, Maryland, Pennsylvania tri state area. You may not realize it, but half of your energy costs go to heating and cooling. Make sure your energy dollars count and call us today for a free estimate. 302 239 HVAC. 302 Two two three nine four eight two two. Get the assurance that your HVAC. And welcome back inside Delaware Live Sports Round Two. Here, Nick Allison, Drini, Mike Lang, Jason Winchell, and Nick Halliday. Time to break down the girls bracket here in 2022. Let's start first with our 24 matchup, 24 nine matchup, I should say. So getting in at the 24 seed, Conrad. So Conrad able again to jump in there at 24, and they'll earn a first round matchup with the number nine seed, the Woodbridge Blue Raiders this year. So a first round matchup of Conrad and Woodbridge to get this bracket started. Yeah, good job for Conrad. You know they lost, yeah. obviously they lost a lot over the past few years. Uh, a new coach this year, new players. They do have uh, Aaron Glantz is back, um, but they have some, some players that are in this year that are, are new. They've done a great job, I've seen two or three times uh, Evil Walker is one of them, Keanu Crawley. Uh, they are going to be they're going to be an issue for Woodbridge. And Woodbridge is the ninth seed, and they have one of the best shooters in the state in Reagan Robinson, and they have a couple other players, Peyton Taylor, a couple of girls who can play. Uh, but Conrad's going to give them, I think, all they can handle. But congratulations, Conrad. Yeah, get in. That's a tough place to go play. Mm -hmm. First of all, you if you can find the parking lot when it's dark <laughs> out, you can't even see it. But <laughs> uh, that's a tough place to play, tough gym, tough road trip for mm -hmm. Conrad. But like Mike said, they are a tough team. Uh, not many people were expecting them in there. Uh, they got in uh, as a 24 seed. And, uh, you know, I, I could potentially see an upset in that first round. Uh, you know, uh, Woodbridge uh, lost a couple games coming down the stretch here. And again, the winner of Conrad and Woodbridge will travel to the eight seed Lake Forest. So Lake Forest, they grab the eight seed in a first round bye here in the girls bracket. Yeah, the, the Henny South champions, uh, Lake Forest. Congratulations for them. Uh, first time in what, 30, 30, 30, 30 yeah. some years. 30 some years. Uh, we went down there to stream the men's game uh, last Friday against Del Mar. And, um, and uh, the AD said, you know, we're playing Woodbridge girls on Tuesday for the Henlopen South title and uh, you know uh, they they handled business on their home mm -hmm. floor, avenged a early season loss to Woodbridge on the road. Wow. So they split the wow. split the season match. series, yeah. and uh, I would love to see the rubber match if, if Woodbridge yeah. gets by Conrad. Yeah, that would be a potential eight nine matchup in round two. That would be a good one if Woodbridge is able to get past number twenty four Conrad. Not there either if it's no. uh, Woodbridge Delmar. Yeah. <laughs> Conrad might put some miles on. I know Conrad. <laughs> if they got to play Woodbridge, if they play Woodbridge, they're going to go. They got to go. There were a couple yeah. boys just stay like there, that right? too. They had wow. to travel twice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now we're going to head to the bottom half of the bracket to check out our 23 seed Red Lion. We'll grab the 23 seed here in the girls bracket, and they will face a team that's been in the top two or three of our rankings all year. But they're going to be a 10 seed come tournament time. That's Cape Henlopen. Yeah, um, Red Lion racked up some wins, but their bonus points just weren't there. They had uh, the schedule was a little bit not as tough as it's been in the past. Uh, playing as an independent makes it a little difficult sometimes to get some games. Uh, Cape Henlope, and I saw them at Sanford, and I saw them at Ursuline last week. Uh, they're tough with uh, Mahoney and Makai Applewhite mm -hmm. and Julia Salour mm -hmm. uh, and others. I don't want to just leave anybody out, but those are the main three. Uh, they got a lot of weapons. You can imagine Pat does a great job. Pat Woods does a great job coaching that team. That's going to be a tough, tough matchup for the Lions. I was just going to yeah. say, say the same thing Mike said. I mean, that's a that's a tough draw for Red Lion. Uh, but congratulations for the Lions for getting in. Like Mike said, 16-4. Uh, you know, 
first year not in the Diamond State, so they don't get the bonus points at the Diamond State, but they get the better record uh, with the 16 wins. Uh, but that's a tough ask to drive all the way down to Cape Henlope in the yeah. lowest. Um, I'm sure if they're, they might see Benny Mitchell in his, his flip flops and shorts down there. <laughs> uh, but, but anyway, uh, he might be at the game. Yeah, right. Shorts. You get the, uh, but uh, that's a, a, a I think uh, you know Cape falling to ten, they might have got a good draw. Yeah. And we'll talk a little bit about that as we progress into the bracket. The winner of 23 Red Line and 10 Cape Henlopen Open will walk into a matchup with number seven. Delmarva Christian. So Delmarva Christian able to make both playoff tournaments in the boys and the girls bracket and both of them having pretty good years as Delmarva Christian able to earn a first round bye here in the girls side of things. Yeah, you know, seven seed for Delmarva Christian. Uh, you know, they, they lost to, I believe, Woodbridge the other night, but be, beat Lake Forest earlier this year. So they have some quality wins. Uh, they also play in that Maryland conference and picked up some bonus points there. So we, all in all, a good year for uh, Delmarva Christian, and, and they get the seven seed. Uh, but that's going to be a, a tough ask uh, yeah. against that Cape Hell Open seed. Yeah, they have, let's look, take a look at their roster real quick. They do have some players who can score, uh, but I think uh, Cape Cape's going to be really tough. Yeah, especially uh, ten seed. Even though it's a home game for them. Yeah, but um, Cape they are at home. Cape has to travel. It's really not that far. But um, Delmarva Christian has seen them surprise people before. And they're there every year, no matter what happens. You always see the Royals in there. Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to see them play this year. Um, but I've, I've seen them in, in past years. They're always uh, uh, disciplined to play together and, and they're fun to watch. So now let's jump to 22 and 11. A matchup here in the first round. Your 22 seed will be Wilmington Friends. They grab that. And then number 11, a team that's been pretty impressive this year, St. George's. So it's the St. George's at 11, Friends at 22 in the first round. Yeah, St. George's, uh, that's a, a good team. They have a freshman, uh, Chastity Wilson. I, I know, uh, they all call her Speedy, yeah. and she, can, she scores a lot of points. They have uh, uh, Richardson who can score. They got they got a lot of options on that team offensively. It's going to be a tough assignment for the Quakers to uh, to go down there to Middletown and win, although or to St. George's and win. Um, I think – Friends wasn't sure they were even in the tournament. I think they put something online yesterday that they came up just a bit short. But they didn't, so congratulations <laughs> to Coach Connors. I believe this is her last season, so wow, congratulations way, to her. To go out and as, uh, yeah, as they did well. sneak into the tournament, so uh, Quakers go out and get it. Yeah, like Mike said, tough matchup for the, the Quakers. Uh, but, you know, um, I, I, want, I always say just get into the tournament and then see what you can do. Once you get in, uh, you know, they can go down there and, and and try and sneak out a win. But that St. George's team is tough, and, and they're at home. I know – I think a lot of people expected St. George's to be up in the top eight eight spots. And just like Cape Henlope, and they, they dropped to 11, and, and that's a dangerous team sitting right there at 11. And then you think about that, and somebody else who's thinking about St. George's being dangerous at 11, that's going to be the sixth seed and the first round by to the Ursuline Red yeah. Raiders. So Ursuline, they get the first round by, they get your sixth seed, but they may have a matchup with a pretty good St. George's come round two. Yeah, Ursuline's been a, a one of these strange teams down the, the stretch. They have a good game and then a bad game and then a good game and then a bad game. They beat St. George's earlier in the year at home. Um, and, you know, so I think they're comfortable with that matchup. But I'm sure Coach Newton going, Newton going I want the, the good the good Raiders uh, team to show <laughs> up this game uh, uh, but, you know, the key to them is that they're a good out shooting, outside shooting yeah, team. But when their shots aren't falling, it makes it real tough for, for – uh, thing. I think they're starting to develop a, a, an inside game, uh, which I think will help them. But uh, I'm sure uh, Coach Newton's going, just for two weeks, <laughs> let's get hot from yeah. behind the arc, please. They could, and very well could. Yeah, I think Ursuline's one of these teams that you look at – you didn't really hear a lot from them during the season. You know, they don't make big splashes, but you look up and they're, they're games. Seed, they did, and they played. They're seeded six. They they uh, they beat Saint Elizabeth pretty handily, and Saint E's only in-state loss of the year. Uh, then they they lost to Saint E's in, in the second in the rematch. Uh, they beat Cape Henlope in, uh, last week, which was in a pretty good matchup. They they struggled a little bit with the press. You know, talking to Coach Noonan, um, the ball handling has just has been. 
where they've struggled a little bit. But if they can uh, handle that pressure, um, you know, they got throws that can shoot. They have some height inside. Uh, I think they're better than people realize and, and succeed. Tells you that they're better than, yeah. than a lot of people think. Yeah, they have. Again, we had a chance to check them out a few times. They were lights out every time I was there. But again, they suffered some some losses. A tough one to Archmere on that buzzer beater just a little while ago. But if they can get hot, they're going to be a team that can advance pretty far in this year's tournament. Let's hop up to 21 and 12 matchup in round number one, grabbing the 21 seed. And they'll have it again in both girls and boys. As we're seeing the Laurel Bulldogs going to get it here for the girls at 21. And they're going to be playing AI DuPont, who grabs the 12 seed. The, the funny thing is, it's a uh, they played hand, yeah, exactly they right played yeah. AI in the first uh, and boys, and the boys right. so and they're going to play them in the girls. The <laughs> I said, yeah, I said, I said, so, so uh, and I believe both are at AI. So Laurel's yeah. going to be ta uh, going uh, taking bus trips uh, Tuesday yeah, and Wednesday, uh, Tuesday for the boys game and Wednesday for the girls game. But uh, congratulations to uh, both teams. Uh, AI. Uh, Coach Price is, is, you know, our friend Lucky has, uh, me and Mike got a chance to work with uh, Lucky. He does a good job over there. He's got that team playing really well. And last year they didn't have a team. And, yeah. and their star player was playing on the boys team. And, and this year she's back on the girls team. And, and she is really good. Uh, she's only I, junior. I know uh, both me and Mike have all state votes. And we mentioned possibly, you know, first team yeah. all state, maybe second team all state for her. So, you know, they have the talent. And Laurel, playing that tough Henlope in South, they got some good wins. Uh, so I think that's a tough matchup against that AI team. Yeah, AI at home. Uh, first, I think Lucky Price uh, could very possibly be the coach of the year for mm -hmm. the girls. I mean, they had no program, as Jay mentioned, last year. Uh, so he's essentially starting from from so from zero. And it's it's nice to start with uh, my, my trader as your building block. I mean, she, she can shoot, she can handle the ball. Uh, they have Shania Dunstan Mason who transferred in from Middletown who gives them a nice little second guard option. You can, you know, and they also have, uh, uh, I think her name's Kaija Jackson. Who, who, it's their big three. And, it, and they're really good. They like to press, they like to run. Uh, they've responded to, uh, to Rob uh, Price and uh, they've done a great job. Unfortunately, I still know a lot about Laurel. Um, but I think it's going to be a tough matchup at AI. They got to be thrilled that they uh, play for the champions. They got to be thrilled to be um, back in the tournament after not even having a team for almost all of last season. And the winner of 21 Laurel and 12 AI DuPont will have a matchup with the Tattanal Hornets, who grabbed the five seed. What a year it's been for the Tattanal um, this year. And they get the five seed. They'll have a first round bye, and they'll get the winner of AI and Laurel. But Tattanal, they have some impressive wins this year. Uh, and even some tough, I mean, even their losses. They lost yeah. to Caravelle by a point, Sanford by four points the first time they played them, and had a lead late in the game the second time they had them before Sanford ended the game on like a 12 0 run. Yeah. So they played Sanford tough twice. They played um, Caravelle tough. Uh, so, a really good team. And I believe one of their other losses was to a 27 0 Plymouth White Marsh team. So, <laughs> yeah, we saw that game. Yeah. Yeah. That, 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 that was a team. Yeah, yeah. They haven't lost. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> PW hasn't lost. Coached by a Wilmington guy, by the way. So, yeah, they uh, were impressive. So, I, I really like that Tattle program. And I think they're sitting in a good spot in the five seed. They, uh, they have, what they have that other teams don't have is the height. I mean, the, the sister, Sophie, and then the yeah. Kirby. Mm -hmm. um, Sophie plays outside the guard. She's like six one. She plays almost plays like a like a guard forward hybrid. Emma Kirby tends to stay down low a little bit more, um, and she she scores a lot. I mean, she's, yeah. she's taller than everybody. She just puts the ball up over everyone, so that does give she's them good. a great advantage. And um, and playing at home would help them out too. Yeah. Um, that'd be a nice uh, matchup. No matter who they get, but I think the AI Tattnall. Possibility would be the tournament yeah, to watch. Yeah, that would be. They're not very deep. That's one thing about Tattnall. They, they tend to stay with their starters, maybe go one or two into the bench. It's not a real big roster, but, man, those girls can play. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll keep it moving. 13 and 20 here. Your 20 seed will be the Padua Pandas coming into this year's tournament, and they're going to get a first-round matchup. They'll head south to take on the Dover Senators, who grabbed the 13 seed. 13 Dover, 20 Padua in round one. Yeah, a little turmoil at Padua this year. Uh, a late, late coaching change this season. But, um, you know, they were in the tournament last year. 
and get knocked out by COVID, they were never able to play. So I know the girls are excited mm -hmm. to be in the tournament. They do have to travel, but I had a chance to see Dover a couple weeks ago, and I think it's a game that could be really even despite the seeding differences. For paddle, really, is it, the shots falling? I mean, that's it comes down, I guess, to everybody in basketball. But <laughs> if if uh, paddle some nights they're lights out, and some nights might as well turn out the lights and go home. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that should be a good one. For and, and everyone's looking and going paddle at eight and eleven. Why they in? Well, their schedule gets them in. I mean, they they played a tough schedule. Uh, they also have a win against AI, which was a four point win. You know, so. That helps them. They got some good wins. They beat a good Conrad team. They, they, they like Mike said, when they're playing good, they, even their first loss to St. Mark's, they were in the game till late, uh, and then St. Mark's went on a run to end the game. So, I, I, you know, like Mike said, they're a 20 seed, uh, but I think they can play with Dover. I think that's going to be a good game, uh, but I do like the home team down there. And Dover, the winner of Dover and Pad will have a matchup with the four seed, who has a first round bye, and they're fresh, fresh off it off a state title. That's the St. Elizabeth's Vikings. They get the four seed. They'll get the winner of Dover and Padua, but they're here defending state champs. And they're really good. Uh, they're yeah. not deep at all, but um, they really – so for them, the key for them is staying out of foul trouble. They have to stay on the floor because they have really aggressive players out there. Uh, I've had a chance to see them probably nine times this year, ten times. Excellent. And, uh, now, yeah, I, yeah, I've seen a lot of the Vikings uh, – <laughs> Um, you know, they just have so many talented players. Farrell White just taking so many steps forward this year. And Erica Huggins has developed an outside shot. And uh, they still have Lori Siskowski as a senior this year. And, uh, Sydney Hilliard transferred over from Mount Pleasant and has really stepped in and, and kind of been a stabilizing force for them out there. So, uh, you know, Coach Coogan's really good at what he does. He's got good assistant coaches. And uh, I think whoever they get to over paddle it, it it's going to be tough for the visitor that night. For sure, for sure, Jeff. Uh, you know what, uh, St. E's, I believe their last loss was early January to Ursland. So, they're, again, we said hottest teams on the boys was Caraval. Well, on the girls, it's that St. Elizabeth's team. I mean, they're they're rolling uh, right ahead. They, they lost to a, a good Central Dauphin team in that tournament in December. And then, and then they lost to Ursland right after that. And... They haven't lost since. They got some good wins against Caravel. Uh, they got their uh, a, a rematch against Ursuline, and, and he came through it. And they beat Woodbridge. And they beat Woodbridge. So I mean, they, they got some quality wins towards a uh, char Wilmington Charter. Um, so I mean, I, I just think right now they're the hottest team, and uh, they're like you said, they're looking for a repeat. Like Mike yeah. said, their issue I think is their depth. If they get in foul trouble, I think they could be in trouble. So again. Dover and Padua, winner gets Saney's in round two. Heading to our 19 and 14 matchup, your 19 seed, the Delaware Military Academy Seahawks, and they'll be taking on the 14 seed. They'll head over to Pike Creek and take, over, take on the St. Mark's Spartans who grab that 14 seed DMA in St. Mark's. will battle it out in round one. That'll always be a fun game. That's going to be a fun one. Yeah. For, for atmosphere. I think, yeah, you got two of the best – sections in all of <laughs> Delaware right there. <laughs> That's what I'm um, I mean, the, the Sally St. Mark's boys game a couple weeks ago was insane. It may not be to that quite to that level, but uh, the DMA students, they travel, mm -hmm. and the St. Mark's kids, they, you know, they, they love the – you're a Spartan, you know, yeah. like they love to support each other, and I think it's going to be a really fun game. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of shots flying from the outside <laughs> uh, between these two. Uh, might be one difference. St. Mark's has a little bit more height, so they might be able to play a little bit more inside, but it should be a close one. I think it's going to be uh, a lot of fun with balls flying from behind the three-point line. Yeah, Jay, we had a chance to check out both of these teams at the Diamond State Classic uh, in late December. Yeah, first of all, what a year for St. Mark's. You know, 15 wins. Uh, they really played well. Came on the show. Obviously, yeah, that's yeah. the key. Uh, yeah, <laughs> again, th that is the key. Uh, but, that, you know, that the coach has got them playing. It was a young team, and for the fact that they won 15 games against the schedule they had, it, it was you know great to see. Uh, and DMA, you know, coach has them playing well. Uh, I know yeah. there was a, a talk last week that would, would they get in? And they had to win uh, their last few games, including a four-point win against a Red Line team, uh, to get in. So, uh, and they, not only did they get in, they've moved up to the 19th seed. So. You know, a good last couple of weeks of the season. They're getting hot at the right time, and and I think that could be the the, the 
key first round uh, matchup. Player to watch for GMA, um, Maya Hill. Yeah. Uh, Phil's Jeez. daughter. Um, she's a spectacular player, and uh, she is a freshman. And the coach over there is Jeremy John. Yeah. So Jeremy's yeah. back behind the bench, and uh, you can tell he's having a good time enjoying his, his time back coaching. He coached Glasgow boys when he was at Glasgow. Um, so I mean, keep your eyes on Maya. And I'm going to single out Maya, but I'm going to. Um, she's, she's a special player. Yeah, got a chance to see her as well. Diamond State and the winner of GMA and St. Mars will get the three seed in a first round by the Wilmington Charter Force. We'll get the three seed here, guys. Well, the first round by. Yeah, uh, very good team. Uh, and the Browns have an outstanding uh, season. Again, another team that came on the show, right? Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, Coach Bolt has that team playing real well. What a great season they had. And, uh, you know, if they get St. Mark's uh, or DMA, it's a rematch of a regular season game. We streamed our first uh, St. Mark's charter. I believe that was our game, our first girls game of the week this year. Uh, and then, um, you know, charter played DMA in that conference. So, uh, but uh, what a great season for the Forest and a very talented team led by a great coach. And again, DMA St. Mark's winner will get the three seed. Charter moving on back to the bottom of the bracket. Your 15 or your 18 seed will be the Seaford Blue Jays here for the girls, and they'll be taking on the 15 seeded Archmere Hawks in round one. That's an interesting matchup there. It's one of the longest drives you can get in Delaware. <laughs> that is true. My uh, God, the only one would be longer, maybe be Laurel or uh, yeah. Delmar, yeah. Delmar yeah. or Indian River, possibly. But uh, that's a long ride for Seaford to go all the way up to uh, my neck of the woods. Um, Honestly, I haven't seen Seaford at all. I've seen plenty of Archmere. Uh, you know, the Hawks, uh, well-coached, uh, disciplined team, good score on Lucy Oliver. She likes to drive. Uh, Lauren Kim out there driving and slashing. That's kind of her game. And they, they don't mind putting up the three-pointer. Um, but I haven't seen Seaford at all. So I really don't know too much yeah. about the Blue Jays, but I imagine they're going to make it. 18-15 is usually pretty competitive. Yeah, absolutely. Seaford had a great season, 15 wins. They beat Woodbridge this year, uh, which, like Mike said, Woodbridge was the king of uh, Hen Open South, and Seaford got a win against them. They beat a, a Smyrna team, uh, you know. Uh, so they, they had some great wins this year, 15, 15 of them. Uh, but that's a, uh, like Mike said, that's a tough drive to come all the way up here and, and play a disciplined Archmer team. And you saw it just be Ursuline a little right. while ago. Yeah, so I think that's, that could be a fun game. Archmer's another one, like I said, Ursuline a little earlier, up and down. Yeah. Archmer's been up and down this year. Uh, I think they followed up the uh, the uh, Ursuline win with one of their worst performances uh, against uh, a good charter team. But, uh, you know, I think that, that that's a, a key matchup for Archmer. And, uh, I just think the uh, playing at home might be the difference in that game. Yeah, so Archmere and Seaford, they'll go at it in round one, and the winner of that <laughs> one will get the Sanford Warriors. So Sanford Ooh. hanging out at our Ooh. number one ranking for most of the year, if not the entire year. And they will get the two seed in the state tournament. They'll get the winner of Archmere and Seaford in round two. But what a year it's been, a very impressive team, and they've got a phenomenal roster over there with some very talented players. They're probably the deepest team of all of the, this the, of this group yep. uh, of top seeds that we've had. Uh, uh, you know, they they have six, seven players that, that all can score in double figures. They play great defense. They got a good coach. Uh, so you know, everything's going their way, and, and they get the two seed. Uh, I believe. Um, you know, they after a couple early season losses to out of state teams mm -hmm. that I believe some of them. One of them was re regionally ranked, and the other one had ended up with like 22, 23 wins. Uh, so you know, Marcus had them playing some tough competition early. Uh, but you know, in state, Tatnall gave them a game a couple times, and you know they played Caraval, they played Arslan, the uh, one team they didn't play was Saint Elizabeth. So you know, it, it's going to be a fun. I think it's going to be a fun tournament. But uh, Sanford, I think, is the deepest of all those teams. I agree with you, Jay. Ursuline hung with them, lost by 12. Uh, but they really handed it to Cape Town Logan. And they just they, they beat Caravelle badly uh, last week. Although, uh, you know, 
up. And Carroll learned a lot of things when they went back and watched the tape uh, of that game. Um, so a rematch, if we get there, would be in the final between Carabell and yeah, Sanford. Okay. But um, Sanford's re <laughs> was really tough. They've got a couple of Division One quality players in their roster. Uh, it's going to be a tough go for anybody yeah. against Sanford, they're especially at their place. Yeah, they got experience. They've got youth. They've got it all. It's like Kilgo kind of leading the way with the ball in her hands most of the time. We had a chance to see them play Kate Penlopen when Kate made the trip up to Sanford in a big top three team matchup, if you will. And Sanford made it look real easy at home in that one. So again, you're gonna be eager to see how they perform in the tournament, but by far one of the deepest and most talented teams we're gonna see this year in girls basketball. And to our final first round matchup, it's the 17-16 matchup. The Appaquinnah McJaguars, they'll grab the seed of 17 and they'll be taking on the 16 seeded Caesar Rodney Riders. So Apo and CR are final first round matchup up top of the bracket. Yeah, I like, I've seen CR a couple times this year. Uh, I like they have a little bit of hype with Terry Bell. Uh, they have uh, uh, some depth. Uh, we kind of like CR. Apo um, relies more on, I mean, not that they rely more, but they have, uh, when we say Cresto is, is their big offensive threat. Um, so you're looking more, she's more of an outside game. CR tends to go inside a little more, so it's kind of a contrast in styles. Uh, it should be a good one, though. Yeah, yeah typical 16 17 match. This could go either way. Uh, CR playing at home uh, could be the difference, but like Mike said, a couple. Uh, I, li I do like CR's height in that game, uh, but uh, you know, if Apo is hitting their shots from the outside, they're going to be tough. But I'll take, uh, you know, I think that's a toss-up game. Flip a coin. Yeah, and the winner of that toss-up game will earn a date with the top seed of the entire tournament here in 2022. It is the Caravel Buccaneers, led by Kristen Caldwell and company. They have been impressive this year, and they get the top seed in a first-round bye. Yeah, and they got the player of the year, Ken. Yeah. <laughs> Going to Towson next <laughs> yeah. year, rather senior. Oh my God, she's really she's going. special. If you haven't seen her play, just watch. I mean, the the moves she makes on the court and the leadership she shows, and and the ability to uh, take over when 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 her team needs her to, uh, but also being a great team leader for the rest of her team. And you know, she's a special kind of player. And um, you know, uh, congratulations to Carabao. They got the top seed. Uh, they played. A, a really tough schedule, and they played all these teams yeah. uh, in state. So, like Mike said, they'll, you know, they've they've lost to St. E's and they lost to uh, Stanford. But they're, you know, the, when you have the uh, a, a special talent on your team, yeah, you're never out of the game. And uh, I really like them. And uh, like you said, a, a very special coach too. And Mike, we talked about you know maybe not a lot of depth there, but their starting five is um, they can really play well. They do have a, the top of the starting five is, is really, really good. I, and everybody focuses on India, mm -hmm. and they should, because she's, she's that good. Um, but they also have uh, Taylor Wilkins, who came back from injury this year. Taylor's been playing outstanding. Yeah. Jemiah Crawford and uh, uh, Amaya Johnson, Nia Price. Yep. Um, they also got, in midseason, they were able to add uh, Janaya Gale, who was there as a freshman, left, came back this year. And she gives them some height inside, and another that's piece kind of what they bench. needed, right? They did need that, but yes. she, she's made a difference. Uh, Janai's had pretty good five or six games that she's been able to play. Um, that's that's a tough, tough team. It's going to be a, a it's going to be a real task for anybody to stick with Caravel until the later rounds. So, uh, they've been kind of knocking on the door forever. So we'll see if this is the year they finally get to bang it down. Bang it down, yeah. yeah and cut down some nets. <laughs> CR 16, Apo 17, the winner will get number one, Caravel. So that is your bracket for girls. Guys, here we go. Tough question of the day, part two. Final four. If you had to pick your final four here today, right here on the moment, four girls basketball. Again, the top four seeds are Caravel, Sanford, Charter, and St. E's. But who's your final four? Mike, we'll start with you this time since I uh, made Jay go first for the girls. All right, so I'm going to go Caravel and St. E's up top. Down the bottom, I would say uh, on the east one first, it'd be Sanford. And uh, out of that other bracket, I'm going to take Ursuline. Okay, as a six. The number six seed to sneak through. Nothing against Charter. I love, I love, I really do. I love the force. I've yeah. seen them enough. Uh, great kids, but 
I got to make a decision here on Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> so Mike Carabell and St. E's at the top. Sanford and Ursuline meeting in the semis at the bottom of the bracket. Jason, on to you. Your final four and one. I'm going to start drinking. <laughs> <laughs> I died Pepsi. I am going to go uh, Carabell. And I'm going to throw out a surprise at you. Okay. I'm going to go to the Hornets. Tattnall over St. E's. There you go. Uh, uh, you know, I, I think that's a tough matchup for the Hornets against St. E's, but uh, – one that I've seen them play against the top teams, and they're always right there. Mm -hmm. uh, wouldn't surprise me to see Tattnall sneak into the, the semifinals. And then on the bottom half, I am going to go. Here's another surprise, yeah. even though there's Let's a three seed. Wilmington Charter Forks. Okay, so going with Charter. I, I'm going with Char Charter. Uh, I, I, I think they can get to the Final Four this year. And uh, Sanford. And Sanford, again, we talked about Cape Penn Lopen getting that 10 seed. Now they're going to meet Sanford in the quarterfinals. Again, didn't didn't look great up at Sanford, uh, you know, just a little while ago. But how about that matchup? Again, two teams that have been in the top five all year, they're going to meet in the quarters. Not yeah. sure where that game would be. I was going to say, my, Mike's right. right. I don't think that uh, Sanford can host the quarterfinals. They can host the second round. Yep. But I believe quarterfinals are going to have to play on a neutral gym. So. Uh, you know, that might help Cape Penn open a little bit because they struggled up at, at, at Sanford. Where did they play last year? Tatnall? And Sanford played at Tatnall? So yes, yep. Last couple of years they played their their, uh, their, sec their home away from home has been at Tatnall. Well, there you have it. Our girls bracket breakdown. Mike and Jay giving you their potential Final Four picks. And, again, both of these tournaments for both girls and boys this year should be very, very exciting. Those first round, even second round games should be great. Brackets are on the and brackets have been posted. Again, just came out here on the DIAA website. Like the brackets themselves, seedings were revealed hours ago. But the brackets now able for you to view online at DIAA. So yep. for Nick Allison, Jr., Mike Lang, and Jason Winchell, as we wrap up the girls thing here, guys, final words as we head into tournament time here in Delaware. No, I said it to the guys, I'm going to say it again. Uh, you know, fans this year. It's going to make a difference. These games are going to be fun. They're going to be exciting. And there's going to have students – and they're going to have fans, and the gyms are going to be packed, and it's going to be a fun atmosphere. So, you know, yeah, let's let's get out there and, and yeah. let's support these teams. And, and you know, like I said, unfortunately, without the staggered starts, you're going to have to pick a game and go to the game. Yeah, pick one. You got a staggered couple good. Start. You got a couple good ones to pick from. So you got to pick one. As you all know, you picked your. Yeah, the final four, and I have to pick your games. You actually get to um, go uh, to. I'm looking forward to uh, having people back in the stands this year. Uh, I gotta say, I'm a little disappointed in that girls' basketball committee for not even considering, uh, at least for the quarterfinals, staggering the start times. And there was no, there wasn't even a discussion. It was like, Why it was it was brought up and said, can we stagger the times? And it was there was it, no discussion. It was no. It's funny it's, how it's, the it's, it's a shame because who were yeah. they there for? They're for the kids. Yeah. They're not, you know, who are they there for? The well, girls want people out there to watch them. Yeah, I'm just disappointed in the girls' and committee. Media coverage. Think and, about it. and it's a lack of media coverage because, yeah. you know, and it's certain media outlets are not going out to cover these games. Yeah. But those of us who are, we can only be in one place. Yeah. Yep. And I'm just disappointed. But I'm excited about the tournament. It's about the girls, not about us. So I hope they have a good time. Right. Tonight. And, you know, it was funny that the two coaches brought it up. And they just got overruled. But the, yeah, not know, even a vote or a yeah, discussion. It, it's was, like, no. it was just no. I mean, it, just it, no. it, it was. It was it well, can't play Sunday because they'd have to have they'd I'm have to bring Saturday, custodian two, two, five, on Monday seven. because if they move them earlier, there's other teams that practice and use in the gym. I want to know who. And if they move them <laughs> later, the girls are out too late. Apparently, was the the, ex the excuse and that's what it was <laughs> that they used. Well, I'm there done. you have it. Yes, <laughs> there you have it. If you want more, we'll go another show at that another time. But for yeah. Nick Allison, Drudy, Mike Lang, Jason Winchell, it's tournament time here in Delaware. Nick Halliday as well. We'll be back with you next week. Maybe with some first round matchups. We'll get you an updated screaming schedule. But for now, check out the brackets at DIAA. We'll see you next time on Delaware Live Sports. High school athletics is not what it used to be. The sporting goods industry has been disrupted. Adding to coach and athletic director daily challenges, BSN Sports stands ready to change the fundamentals of our industry, giving our customers the advantages they need right now.
Your dedicated local sales pro is supported with nationwide team service, including sport and category experts. Get the look of D1 colleges and pro teams with our program that streamlines ordering your staff apparel, player gear, and fanware. Stretch your budget with our fundraising solution. Free and ready in minutes. Our campus branding products are perfect for boosting school and team pride. BSN Sports has the advantages you need right now.